Welcome to their inventright.com show. My name is Andrew Krauss. I'm the co-founder. And today I want to talk about the impression, the impression that you need to make on companies. And it's totally not what you think. I'm going to talk about over here all the stuff that you don't need to do, the things that inventors think they need, reasons why they won't call companies because they think they need to be somebody that they're not, and the, the, the reasons why you, the, the impression that you don't want to make. The impression you definitely don't want to make. That's a red flag that will have them run screaming. Okay? So, uh, one, you don't need to come across as a captain of industry. You know, they're the business people. They have the, the, the money, the sales force, the manufacturing, the marketing, the advertising teams, and they have all those relationships. So they're the business person. You don't need to come across as this captain of industry or some great business person. You don't need to come across as this incredibly competent, in most cases, like an engineer where you understand every little aspect of the product. Sometimes you don't understand 90% of the product, but your change, you, you change to it, you understand. But the inner workings of the product, you don't, and that's fine. That's what you're bringing to the table. So you don't need to be a captain of industry. You don't need to be an engineer for most products. You don't need to come across as this patent expert. You don't need that either. Um, so you don't need any of that. You also don't need any prior experience whatsoever. All they care about is that one product. In 19 years with students in 60 countries, yes, 60 countries, um, I've only had two students in that time that had a company ask the inventor for their portfolio. What have you done before? Let's see what you've done before before we can take a look at what you're showing us now. Never happens, guys. So it's no difference between somebody that's licensed 20 products and you who've never licensed one. There is no difference. They just care about that product. Now there's experience in knowing what to say, how to have these conversations, but as far as them being interested in your product, it's irrelevant, okay? So you don't need all these things that you think you need. Now, what you do need is not to come across as a wacky inventor and to come across as easy enough to work with. So let's give you some examples of um, what would be a wacky inventor? So if they think you're going to micromanage them on every little thing, like you want to make it pink and they want to make it purple, and you're going to argue about that, red flag. They're most any any sane company will kick you to the curb. Or you're going to change it half an inch there or half an inch there, and you're not okay with it. Or you're going to use a different kind of hinge, and you're freaking out. If they start to get indicators of these things. If I was a marketing manager at a company, I would, I would tell my boss, like, this is a really cool product. This inventor is going to be too hard to work with. It's not worth it. And I've talked to companies where they've, the students of ours that have licensed products to companies, and they were happy with our students, but they're like, oh yeah, I talk to inventors all the time where I kind of like the product, but I don't want to deal with the inventor. So it's a really low bar, guys. You just have to not come across as wacky and difficult. That's what it comes down to. And, you know, uh, Dana, who was, who was talking to a company that she licensed to recently, she realized on one of her calls that she's one of our students that licensed a product recently, that it was all about her on this particular call. And what they were doing is they were kind of interested. They had other conversations. They were vetting her to see if she was going to be difficult. And she said, it was kind of weird, Andrew, because they weren't asking me about my product on this particular call. They're asking me about how I perceive different things and, and, and all that. And they were vetting her. And this particular company, which they won't almost ever do this, but they told her, like, you passed. You kind of passed the wacky inventor tests. And she's like, oh, okay. They didn't use those words. But a lot of companies will, will be kind of screening you during your talks with them and vibing on the way you react and how easy you are to work with. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to disagree on something. That's fine. You know, if you really believe it's valid, but if you're just kind of micromanaging stuff that doesn't need to be micromanaged, you're not making points that need to be made and you're just trying to take control over all this, you got to give up a little bit of control because they're going to spend a lot of money to make this thing happen. And if they feel like you're a control freak, that's not good. If some of them want you put a lot of input in. Other ones, you know, like, oh, we kind of got it from here. And you need to be able to read that. If you don't read that, then you might start coming across as a wacky inventor. That company might be like, no, we got it from here, but you keep pushing. And other ones are like, oh, no, we want feedback, but you offer weird feedback or you're being more difficult than you need to be. You're not easy to communicate with. So, uh, but doesn't mean you're not going to negotiate. You're not going to debate stuff. That's fine. So, do you need a portfolio? No. Do you need to come across as a captain of industry? No. Do you need to be a patent expert? No. Do you need to be an engineer? No. You don't need any of this. You just need to not be wacky. Okay? And you will license your products. 
Thank you. Take care and keep inventing. See ya.